After years of fertility treatments, we finally had our precious embryo. I wanted to learn how to prepare for a successful embryo transfer. So I scheduled a meeting with Dr. Chang at Hanabusa IVF. If a patient, a couple, only has one embryo to work with, which is very typical of my patients when I work with difficult patients, we may not want to risk just merely depending on these non-invasive imaging studies. We may just want to go right to the hysteroscopy because if the embryo transfer should fail, uh, many times the recommendation would be, well, let's think about cleaning out that uterus. Uh, if we only have one chance, we may not get another opportunity. Now, there are some other things that could be done. You may have heard of a term called a mock transfer cycle, where a patient is placed through the whole transfer process, but you're not transferring embryo. At the end, you are merely doing a practice transfer to make sure that, that there's no difficulties in getting that embryo in. The other thing that can also be done is you can actually sample and test the uterus at that point to determine, one, whether or not it is the right timing of the transfer. This is a test called the endometrial receptivity array test, or short ERA, and that can give you maybe 90 to 95% corroboration that the test that you've done, the timing is, is correct. And if it's not correct, the test has been shown that you can adjust it based on the results. Another thing that can be done with the same test is you can test for a condition called endometriosis. These extra tests though, in most cases are not necessary. 95% of the patients don't need these tests, but there will be this group of patients up to 5% that may benefit from these tests. After running a few additional tests, my uterus was ready. So now we had to decide how to best manage my cycle. Hormones or all natural? From a hormones per perspective, what I like to do is I like to try to mimic what nature's doing. So in, in nature, right before someone ovulates, we'd like to see that estrogen 150 units, I'm gonna just say units, although technically it's picograms per milliliter, 150 units or more. There are many doctors that like to have that estrogen much, much higher. The studies have not necessarily shown that's better, and there is a risk with these hormones. If you go higher, these hormones can predispose you to developing blood clots, which can create strokes, can create pulmonary emboli. Then we're looking at progesterone. Progesterone could be in an artificial cycle, artificially given, or in a natural cycle, you ovulate and your body's producing it. Natural physiologic progesterone is usually 15 units, nanograms per milliliter or higher at this point. Above that, I usually supplement. There are many doctors who like to supplement vaginally and they won't even look at your hormones. I think that's a little bit risky. But once the progesterone level's in and adequate, then we focus on the transfer. We really wanted this frozen embryo transfer to work. I needed to know, are there any recommendations to optimize the success with lifestyle and diet choices. The most important thing with, from a patient's point of view is being a happy, healthy person, being as healthy as you can be. This does not mean that you have to suddenly start training like you're training for the marathon, but it means eating a good, healthy diet, getting enough exercise, getting enough sleep, and being in a very good mental state of mind. You will hear people super supplementing themselves with various supplements or, or taking these really radical diets. None of the studies have really shown that it makes a, there, there's any definite advantage to that. There is evidence that some of these excessive treatments can actually be more harmful. But from my point of view, what I always recommend to my patient is just being a happy, healthy person and letting our treatments kind of take care of the rest. I often will tell patients coming into the transfer, if they're, they are feeling stressed, whether or not it's physically or emotionally, because the embryo is frozen, they may want to consider canceling the cycle and trying again. I can control the embryo, I can control how it goes in, I cannot control your environment when it comes to the embryo transfer. None of us are perfectly healthy people, but we just want you to be in the best state of mind physically and mentally for this. Occasionally, my patients will have acupuncture treatments done, and there have been some studies that suggest that it could actually increase implantation rates by, I think, 10 to 15%. So that's another thing that could be done to help with the relaxation phase. And uh, for someone who's very stressed, we do suggest perhaps even taking a mild tranquilizer, a Valium, a Clonopin, just to reduce a lot of the anxiety.
The process can be very, very complicated depending on your situation. Every patient is completely different and should be treated completely differently. So you should be using this just as a guide. Your discussion with the physician and your history will kind of dictate what are the necessary steps leading into this frozen embryo transfer. If you'd like guidance on your fertility journey, contact Hanabusa IVF today.